this week on Hasten TV. Ah, it's moving day. We're going from a backpack to a house. Getting everything packed. The same place we were getting for the studio and the office. We got our room in the back. And we're going to be living there. We've been back for a few months, but we have been slammed by attacks from the enemy. We're at the brink of having to shut this thing down. If we have to sell everything we have, we're not going to quit. We have to decide, are we going to keep going, even if all the support drops? Hi, we're Dustin and Darlene Stanley. For years, we've traveled to some of the most remote and unreached parts of the world, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who've never heard it before. It has been awesome. Now, it's time to train others. So we're gathering a group of friends and we're hitting the road once again. Our goal is to share the love of Christ with those we meet and do our part to hasten the day of the Lord. Jesus! So we say goodbye to my California family, and we're back in Mississippi. It's Thanksgiving, yeah. Mississippi does Thanksgiving right. Hey, there's fasting and there's feasting in the Bible, and today it's feast day. We got turkey, we got stuffing, we got gravy, we got cranberry sauce, we have all the works. We're in fat boy heaven right now. The last year we've been gone. We weren't here for the holidays. We spent them in India. We spent them in Thailand and in China. Ah, oh, the food. Turkey, dressing, pecan pie, apple pie, lemon pie, chocolate pie, sweet tea, homemade ice cream, stream beans, collard greens. This is what the marriage feast of the Lamb will look like. America's blessed. We got so much food, more than we know what to do with. Good stuff. So after the holidays and after feasting good with family, we wasted no time. We're packing and moving. We found a small little house that we're going to rent while we uh, edit all of our video footage and try to get it out there for the world to see. If we don't get this work done, no one will know all the things God has done. Ah, it's moving day. Moving, moving, moving. What's going on here? We're uh, getting everything packed our bed and our bookcases. And we're moving into our studio to get these videos put together. We're actually the same place we were getting for the studio and the office. We got our room in the back. Dustin's packing up this truck and we are filling it to the brim. Everything has to fit. Almost 100% of the stuff that you see here has been given to us by great partners and great friends. Thanks so much. Hold up on being yelled at. Okay, we've got everything in the back. Now we've just got to close her up and get out of here. Oh, we can get it, Jess. That ain't good for it. What, what's your strength in the bed? Right. Now this tailgate, man, really? We're trying to get it in one truckload. It's a bit of a challenge. Go ahead, bud. We can do all Wait, wait, we're gonna do it together. All right, here we go, on three. One, two, three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I saw that going differently in my head. <laughs> that was a bad idea. <laughs> you thought of that. You did. We're not gonna be defeated by a stinking tailgate not closing. We got two rednecks trying to close this thing. It's hilarious. 
The back of the truck is bent toward the cab like this. We were thinking maybe we had an inch give. Uh-uh, there is no give. The bed's just like an inch or two too long. One thing about my in-laws, where there's a will, there's a way. Okay. Time for some rigging. <laughs> what do you think? I see Dustin's dad thinking he's got that look on his face. Uh-oh. Maybe we could cut the bed in half. Duct tape. We need a net. We need some chewing gum. We need a bungee cord. Yeah, bungee cord. Parachute. We could do this if we had a parachute. Super glue. Hair gel. It is cold too. But at least thank God it's not raining. We got some sunshine. It's just freaking cold. <laughs> Remember the last time you said it was cold? It was in Tibet. Now is this cold? Turned into a freaking pansy in America. Yes, it's cold for Mississippi. We don't have these cold temperatures. Yeah. We <laughs> southern. It is cold. For Mississippi, it's cold. The thing that gets really cold is my hands. My hands are like ice. See? It's not that cold. Stop it. Mmm, it's kind of soothing. <laughs> Do you get on the camera? All I see is your nose. <laughs> After a coffee break and then some, finally, they got it shut. I am man. I close Dougie. Three others. <laughs> A oh, redneck moving thing. <laughs> they just called me redneck. You redneck. <laughs>here our little rental house super excited about it it's pretty exciting you know I mean this is this is our new home oh yeah this is of course the bathroom yeah. get a good look so we're gonna spend a lot of time in there anyway <laughs> right, this is the bedroom and this is where we are gonna stay uh, the room over here is gonna turn into the studio so we wasted no time at all. We're busy, we're painting the office. Dustin's building desks. We're getting everything put together. We're going from a backpack to a house, baby. Oh yeah. So everything's going good. We're getting the house together and we welcome our first guest into the home. We already got company. This is our friend, Nick Puffer. I remember this one time, Nick had a van. It was an old white van. One day it broke down and we just left it. He's gonna be headed out with us mm -hmm. this, coming, uh, this coming year. We're getting the whole team together. We got about seven or eight people, but we had a bit of a um, uh, disturbance. Oh man. <laughs> Our rug froze. <laughs> well, I told Darlene last night, I said, Darlene, don't turn off the water. She said, well, well, can't I just let it drip? Won't it do just as well? Water running? Why do you have to do that? I'm from California. We don't run the water when it gets cold. That's ridiculous. I wake up the next morning, I turn on the water, and guess what happens? No water in the kitchen, no water in the bathroom. The toilet ain't gonna flush. The pipes are frozen. But Darlene last night turned off the, the running water to drip anyway because she said she knew better than me apparently. And now no one can pee in our house. So we got up and we didn't have any water. Then I walked outside. Nick said, hey man, look at that. I think the uh, pipe uh, busted <laughs> this oh morning. I uh, come out to get my jacket and uh, found a geyser uh, going in the yard. <laughs> Dusty uh, is going out to try to fix this thing, so we'll see what happens. Huh? Okay. I'm trying to turn this valve, it's really tight. Here's what happened to the pipe. You know, the ice, uh, ice actually froze in here and uh, expanded and just, uh, just busted. <sighs> we got the water off now. Our landlord just arrived and uh, it's going to help us try to fix the pipe. You've done this before, had you? A few times. <laughs> to, make, to make you feel better, every person at Lowe's this morning had pipe, <laughs> cement and cleaner, 
<laughs> and couplings. Are you serious? Serious. Yeah. Uh, the guy, I asked the guy, I was like, you got any more insulation? He's like, we barely have any more pipe left. <laughs> he said, everybody, he said, everybody's had to come by here and buy stuff this morning. Well, they say if one small little section of pipe is showing, that can be the po the point that just mess you all up. Yeah. The old pipe, the old pipe had a little bit of showing here, and so naturally it that's where it that's where it completely froze up. There you go. So we're good. We're getting going, and we're gonna be able to get some water in the house again. Water just came back on. Word to the wise. It gets cold. Your pipes aren't securely wrapped. Keep the rudder running, Darlene. Don't turn it off. No dripping. We need solid running hot water. Ah! Anyway, I feel really bad. And I'm sorry. Oh, I can't stay mad at you. My baby can travel the world. She can go up river in a canoe. She can ride horseback to nomads to tell them about Jesus. But she's from California. When it comes to cold weather, she is clueless. And Nick, what do you think about all this? What are you doing? Um, I'm cooking spaghetti, man. <laughs> but I still don't think it was Darlene's fault. I think it's her neighbor's fault for shutting off the water outside, actually. You're the only one sticking up for me. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. You're welcome, bro. <laughs> Can we pin it on the neighbor? <laughs> no! <laughs> so everything's been going smooth. And then around month three or four, we just get slammed. Earlier, we got an email that our largest church partner was dropping us because we're at home. And now I just got another one that we've lost another pastor. They don't really believe in the television part of what we're doing. A lot of these people are saying that we just went over there for a vacation, that we're not real missionaries, that we are just wasting God's money. Some of the, uh, the pastors who have, uh, I know that we were their only missionaries, you know, and uh, they've stopped giving. One of them just sent me an email. We're going a different direction. Uh, and we're their only missionaries, so the other direction they're going is um, away from missions. <laughs> you know, when you're out there and you're tracking through mountains and riding boats up river to try to get to that group of people that you can plant seeds with so you can come back and plant something later that'll last, and you find out what really is important, I say give to missions, man. Don't give to us. Give to somebody else. Just make sure you are caring about the rest of the world that's uh, dying without Jesus and hungry and, and thirsty and naked and uh, homeless. <laughs> Care about them. Find out what's being given to the mission field in your church. Find out. And if they're given to missions, great. Pour in. Give 20% to the church. You know what I mean? Just pour it out. But if they're not giving anything, be led by the Holy Spirit. Make sure some of your money gets to the unreached people of the world. Because it is not a, uh, just about a blessing. It's about a responsibility. And it's about a responsibility to use the talent that God's given you correctly. But it breaks my heart. It really does to see people forsaking the one thing that God cares about more than anything else. I've been in the States for almost, almost four months. Decided to hang our, our backpacks for now to put them in the closet in there. And it feels strange looking at it. Just all these memories that happened on our trip and overseas. This was the thing we carried with us the whole way, and here it is. I actually found myself the other day uh, looking at the skirt I wore like 10 months out of the trip and just thinking, man. It was just so much easier to put that on and go, you know. I can never picture myself just sitting still. I'm so ready to get back out there already. Four months back is, feels like an eternity, you know. It feels like a long time. More of the world lives right here than lives in all of these put together. We have to decide, are we going to keep going? Even if all the support drops, will we keep going? We're at the brink of having to shut this thing down, and we're not going to do it. If we have to sell everything we have, 
not going to quit. I have to keep going. We have to keep going. This is not something that was Dustin and Darlene's idea, you see. This is, this is God's idea. I am not going to be broken by the devil trying to stop these stories and our mission from going forward. We've been back for a few months. We're working hard to create this television program. But we have been slammed by attacks from the enemy. We cannot let unforgiveness and anger and uh, just bitterness get inside of us. So yeah, Dustin and I, we just got to shake some of this off right now. It's too heavy. We got to make a theme song for the television program. So we invited all our friends over to our house and we started recording. James has percussion instruments in our entire living room. Nick has brought speakers and pieces of equipment. Our living room is now a recording studio. And all of our friends started just popping up at our house and coming over and we were having a great time with everybody. Oh yeah! <laughs> this is awesome. We got all of our friends piled in this house and we're putting together this amazing, I mean, I'm doing pretty much nothing, but um, everybody else is putting together this amazing music for the beginning of our show. It's so much fun. Just to not doing nothing is pretty typical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is coming together. Darlene's putting the music down on the piano. Nick's playing the guitar. James looks at me and says, Dustin, we're missing something. Cowbell, we need more cowbell? He's like, no. We need tribal voices. Tribe voices? Okay. All right. Ooh. Ooh. All right. So it's there gonna, we go. It's going to be. So let's do this. I'm ready, man. Dustin and James are just getting into it. Dustin is really into it. I feel alive right now. I am mad. Yes. Oh, huh. I think we'll break into it right now. We're gonna have to stop this interview. Ha. Huh. Like this warrior coming out of him. It's like this wild animal. This lion is like. Rah. It makes me feel strong. Like mine. Like mine. Make fire. <laughs> Man, make fire with reverb in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I need water. <laughs> do it now, do it in a squeaky voice. <laughs> That's what you guys are gonna sound tomorrow. <laughs> Having our friends with us right now is just helping us get our mind off of our own personal struggles, and it's really lifting our spirits. <laughs> <laughs> we're encouraged, we're feeling better, and just when I thought, man, this is, this is good, I got another phone call. But this one, it's good news. A youth ministry was inviting us to come speak. They wanted Dustin and I to come minister and bring the fire from the mission to their young people. See, our country... It's not like we're better than everybody. We're not smarter than everybody. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. There is one reason why we have all this money, all these nice things, this nice air conditioner, and I love it. It's great. I'm thankful for it. But why? That's the question. Why do we have these things? From where did we get these things? It is the Lord God who has blessed us with talent. Yes. Talents. Bags of silver, baby. Yeah. And if you look in that, in that parable, you'll see there's one thing it's given by. Ability. Mm -hmm. He gave it according to their ability. Am I telling the truth? That's right. That's right. According to their ability. So God literally looked down on our founding fathers and saw that he believed that the American country had the ability to take care of his business to a massive degree. Last night we read about the judgment, about taking care of the poor, all the, the, the naked. That is connected to this parable, by the way. His business is people, rescuing people. 
He believes in his heart that we have the ability to be a blessing to every nation on planet Earth. But the talent that God has entrusted us with is staying usually right in our own pockets. And he is coming to account for his talents. We are benefiting from the money and the talents and the influence that God has given us to bless this nation and every nation on planet Earth. God has just blessed his, his family, his army, his people, his body on this planet with more than enough to accomplish the job. Every spiritual blessing in heaven has been put in and the next generation we can see the gospel preached to the ends of the earth we can see oppression stop we can see hunger cease and Jesus can look down at his church and say that's what I'm talking about I have left my family before and I will leave them again in August I will take people out I will try to build up laborers for the gospel I will sleep on floors I will sleep in dirt I will eat whatever I have to eat sleep wherever I have to sleep face danger I don't care what I have to do because I want to be a revolutionary for the Lord Jesus Christ and in you is in it to be a revolutionary. Dustin just preached his heart out and the anointing and the power of God just fell on the place. The kids are like crying out to God. They're just standing and saying, I will go. I will be a part of the Great Commission. This was a small youth ministry, but everybody was in the altars that night. As I preached, I had this realization. If this group cares about the Great Commission, there are millions more who care. And I just need to connect with them. I am determined, now more than ever before, to keep going, to not quit, until all have heard the name of Jesus. For us, from this point, it's all in or nothing. It's all in for the gospel. Thank you for watching. In this episode, you got to witness some of our hardest struggles after we returned from one of our longest missionary journeys. You see, we come home and we're so excited, but then we are hit with one thing after the next. We know that God has a plan. We know He wants us to get these videos out. We know He wants us to plan another mission and to gather a team and hit the road again but there is so much opposition. And it seems like we get hit and hit and hit until we're begging for mercy, you know, and of course the Lord came through. You saw how it ended that even in our hardest time, He brought friends and He brought the church to encourage us. And we were about to lose hope in some of the church and some of the people we knew. God came through. I wanna encourage you today. Listen, the Bible says in Proverbs 24, it says, though a righteous man falls seven times, he gets up every single time. The book of Psalms, Psalms 139, says that God has written a book about your life. This book, according to Jeremiah 29, 11, is a plan, it's a good plan for a hope and a future. God has something in your future. Some of you have dreams. Some of you have stopped dreaming. You have been beat down. Things in life have come against you one thing after the next. People talked about you. You were attacked with slander. So many things happened. Tragedy, heartbreak. And after a while of being beat like that and the devil just coming against you like a flood, just attacking you and attacking you, after a while, you, you kind of want to quit. But I'm telling you, one thing we have got to recover as Christians in this day and age is courage to keep coming. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12 that Jesus endured the cross because of the joy set before him. That means as Jesus was carrying that cross, it was hard. He had been beat all night. They had ripped out his beard. They had beat him with the whip until he was just bloody and raw. They had shoved the crown of thorns down on his head. He had no energy. 
He, was, he had been humiliated. He had been treated terribly. And yet he shouldered the cross and carried it. And he endured all of that for the joy set before him. And you know what the joy set before him was? You and I. That we would be saved. Because the Bible says, it says, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that if we believe in Him, we shall not perish but have everlasting life. So i got two things I want to say to you. First off, if you are going through a terrible time and you're a Christian and you are just pushing but you feel like the devil's coming against you so hard, do not quit. Greater is He that's seen you than He that's in the world. Do like I did in the episode. Get by yourself and pump yourself up. Find your battle cry. Speak the word of God into your situation. Find your courage. You keep coming. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. You can overcome. Christ has overcome the world. So you just keep at it. Don't you quit. Don't you quit. And listen, for you who do not know Christ and you're like, I need that inner strength. I don't even know what you're talking about. Jesus said that if you come to him, he will not cast you away. And I want to invite you. He endured that cross for you. And when you come to him, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you confess that he will be your Lord and master, and you believe it, and you really mean it, you turn away from your old life, you will be saved, you will be forgiven, you will be made brand new inside. To do that, it starts with a prayer. Pray with me right now. Say, God, I know I've done wrong. I have ignored your law. I have done bad things. I am guilty. But Jesus died, and I believe it. And I believe you raised him from the dead. And I believe Jesus died not for his own sins, but for our sins. I turn away from my old life. The old me will be dead from this moment forward. And I say, Jesus, you are my Lord and Master. From this day on, I will serve you. I believe in you. Amen. You just got born again. At the end of this episode, I want you to see how to contact us and let us know that you made that decision. And listen to me. For you who are struggling, there's something great that God wants to show the world. Just like you're watching this, this would not have happened if we would have quit. Do not quit. You would have never known who we are if we had quit. Find your strength in Jesus. See the vision ahead of you. See the joy ahead. And keep at it. Visit us today at www.hasten.tv and check out more of our episodes and content we have there online, freely available for you. We also have many projects going on around the world that we absolutely need your help with. So please sign up and become a monthly partner with us in helping us spread the gospel. Also, if you desire to be trained in missions, we have an on-demand mission training course called Great Commission Academy. Sign up for that today, guys. Thank you.